Hey everyone, if you are enjoying these videos, go check out my website at www.apcsexamprep.com. I have information on boot camps and tutoring availability, along with other AP Computer Science resources I think you'd enjoy. Welcome to 1.8 of Code HS's AP Computer Science A 2025 edition. This section is talking about documentation with comments. So, comments are an important part of documenting how your code works. So they explain notes with the code that help clarify, document, and manage code functionality and development. So they're ignored by the compiler and not executed when the program is run. They clarify a complex part of an algorithm, document the purpose or logic behind specific code elements, and track how code has changed over time or ideas for future development. They disable code to aid in testing and de the debugging process. So comments are written for both the original programmer and other programmers to understand the code and its functionality. Here we have an explanation of our method, line by line. This is how to add the two input numbers together and return the result. So writing effective comments is an art. Each programmer may approach the process in a slightly different way. In general, an effective comment explains the purpose or reasoning behind the code clearly and concisely without repeating obvious details. Effective comments are concise, so this would not be concise. Tax rate equals the national tax rate of 3.5. That is a good comment. Relevant and helpful. Declare a variable called count and set it to 10. Well, what does count actually mean, count equaling 10? Why is that important? So the maximum number of attempts allowed in a game. Effective comments provide insight into the why. So why, when count equals zero, does the game end? When count reaches zero, it means all turns or rounds in the game are complete. Display a message to inform the user that the game has ended. Does the comment clarify the doc and document the code so that you and others can understand what it's, what's going on? Yeah, absolutely. So comment syntax, there are three types of comment structures, single line or multi-line. So single line looks like this usually. Uh, rarely like this, but um, then multi-line would look like this, typically. The two stars um, here would indicate that you are creating a Java Docs documentation, and it would create a Java Docs documentation in the API, so you would be able to see what the method signature was, what the parameters were, what the pre and post conditions are, and description of the method. Single line comments provide brief explanation or notes directly before or next to specific lines of code. Here you have it before, here you have it right next to it, and then you can use the slash star as well. Without the slashes making it a comment, it would look at that text as if it was code and would cause an error. Multi-line comments are used to document longer explanations or block sections of code. So it's just another option instead of using slashes every time. You can do slash star and star slash to end it. So debugging with comments is a very common way to change your code without losing it. So comments can also be used as a debugging tool. There's an error, you don't know why. So you start sectioning off areas to see where the error lies. And so there wasn't an error when you would do this, but here, since it's not a capital S string, this would cause an error, so we know that this is the line that, that the error is actually on. So this is called commenting out the code and can help eliminate and isolate bugs in your program. So Javadoc's program automatically translates the Javadoc comments into API format. So the main difference between Javadoc comments and regular comments is that there's an automatic conversion to that Java API so that you can have a place where the description, parameters, and return types are stored in your code. The format, like I said, was one sentence description, a precondition, a postcondition, and then block tags. So here's the description. Preconditions are conditions that must be true prior to the execution in order for that code segment to behave as expected. Postconditions are conditions that must be true after the code segment is executed. They specify the expected state or result of the program after the method runs. And the block tags would be the parameters or return types um, that are needed for the method. 
So in this program, you're supposed to analyze the comments and see which ones are effective comments. So I need to be more specific on what it actually, what is num1 actually doing? And then prompting user for the first number. Yeah, that's, that works. Um, this one is too much in the comments, not concise enough. And then prompting user for the second number. Absolutely. Performing calculation. What is the calculation it's performing? Um, calculating the sum, something like that. Then print statements. What are you printing? And then, so it's not specific enough. And then demonstrating casting a sum to a double, that is good, that is effective. And then printing the average result with a clear explanation. So here's the updated version with the correct answers. So creating a variable for the first number of user input is more detailed than declaring a variable. Number two was good. And then number three, creating variable for second number of user input is much more concise. Number four was good. Number five, not just doing a calculation, but calculating sum of two inputted numbers. And then this needs to be more descriptive, printing the two inputted numbers and their sum to the user. So now this one is good. Um, this one was already a solid comment. And then number eight, print the average result with a clear explanation is a little bit more specific than the original. All right, good programmers use comments to tell the compiler what they want the code to do. No, they're telling another programmer. The compiler uh, does not read comments. Make the code more readable by explaining particular chunks of code. Yes. Make the code more readable by explaining what every line does. No. So our answer would be B, make their code more readable by explaining particular chunks of code. Here, what is the output of the following code snippet? Eight and 10. This line wouldn't happen. This would double to 20. This wouldn't happen. And so eight and 20 would be our answer. Which comment is most effective for describing the following line of code? So we want it to be specific and concise. Well, they're all concise. This code multiplies two numbers. No. Calculate the area of the rectangle using length and width. Yes. Yeah. How might a programmer use comments to help debug a program? Comment out a block of code to temporarily disable it and test the program without that part. Yeah, that looks good. And there we go. Okay. So we have my account is 100. Print the current balance. Add 50. Print the balance. Subtract 30. Print the balance, subtract 150, print the balance. So um, create an account with an initial balance of $100. Print the current balance and 50 to Account and print current balance, and I would do that each time. So subtract 30 or withdraw. Subtract 30 from the account, and then subtract. 150 from the account and print the balance. So it might be better to put deposit and withdraw. But there's our answer. Okay, so they want us to comment out all of the code, all of the methods, and then they want us to uncomment them uh, one by one to see which ones work and which don't, and only call the methods that work. So you can highlight and on a Mac, it would be command slash on a PC it would be control slash and it'll comment out a, a large chunk. And so then we will uncomment method one and run it. See if there's an error. There is. So we want to slash slash, but it tells us pretty clearly that it should be capital S string on line 20 and then line 38. It says that this should be out. So then we run it. Uh, 
and that fixed all of the errors but I'm not sure that they want us to do that so we only want to have the methods that are correct be running so that would be 38 was method 4 so 1 and 4 would be incorrect so it wants to comment out the whole method when it was wrong so this was lowercase s and this was And then you want to check the code. And there's our answer. And so this Java Docs uh, comments notes are the same as the original notes. So if you want to look back at those, um, you can. So greeting Java Docs. This simple program uses two methods, greet English and introduce to perform actions with the people created in the main method. You need to create Java Doc comments above each method that describes the function of the method, the precondition, post condition, and meaning of any parameters uh, with tags. Once done, the javadoc API simulation and a new tab turn the javadoc comments in this program into an API page. So you need to do the slash star star and then every line before you do star slash greet a person by name in English. So then we would do precondition the input must be a string name post conditions print hello hello name and at param name of the person greeted. So if I copy and then I go to this javadoc API and I generate it, it will create that API documentation like so. With the return type, the method, the description, the method signature, and then a description, and then a parameter. So introduce will print the name of the person getting introduced and the person they are getting introduced to. Preconditions, the input are both string names of the correct the people being introduced. Post conditions would print a message introducing the people by name. And then param would be uh, two strings uh, of each person's name being introduced. And we can check the code here. And if you want to copy and paste this documentation and test it in the, the simulator, you can do that as well. Okay, so they want to separate out the two parameters. So, param, param, the person name being introduced as first string. 
person's name being introduced to as the second string. I didn't use the at symbol, at, at. And there we go. So what is the primary pur purpose of a Javadoc comment? To temporarily disable a block of code? No. To mark a section of code? No. To describe the functionality of classes, methods in a format that can generate external documentation? Yes. The purpose of specifying a precondition is to specify the types of inputs the method accepts? Yeah, that might be it. Explain the method's end result, whether it... No. That's the post condition. State the return values now. Describe what must be true just prior to the execution of the method in order for it to behave as expected. So yes, this is it. The inputs um, would be the param, param tags. Post condition would be the end result. Explain the method's end result, whether there's a return value or change in an object state. There we go. All right, and that is it for 1.8 documentation with comments. I hope you enjoyed the video and don't forget to check out my website apcsexamprep.com where you can get more information on boot camps and tutoring availability.